Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while, but finally we have finished Endor and today I'm going to show you everything we built in this incredibly detailed area. We're going to be covering builds, rides, and of course the POV of the speeder chase. Very, very exciting stuff, so let's get into it. I must say, I think this is one of my most insane, most detailed and most accurate projects to this day. I am honestly very surprised by how well this turned out. So um, beginning here at the entrance, we have an Endor sign explaining some fun facts about Endor as a planet. If you'd like to read this, feel free to pause the video. Um, I'm going to move on. The entrance, as you can see, is just a giant wooden log uh, attached to two kind of pole elements. And I do think this turned out pretty solid. It's a nice original idea to begin this area, so I cannot complain. I love the ivy on it as well. But then here we actually enter the area. It is quite large, actually. Looking back, maybe it's a bit too large, but nonetheless, it still looks cool. I put some signs down pointing you in the right direction for certain rides and elements. That's something I thought was quite fun. And if you go over here, there's actually a park map. Once again, if you want to read all this, make sure to pause the video. It's kind of similar to the Benny's Movie Park 1 map, except now it's Endor, so there you go. And in general, around all the edges of this area, I added a bunch of uh, vegetation and, uh, you know, just nice greenery and stuff. So uh, this is what you can expect throughout the entire thing. Anyway, I suggest we begin right here over at the Ewok Barbecue. This is is my favorite restaurant for one single reason the cooks have seriously messed up these ribs so that so that is uh yeah it's a fun detail to be fair the restaurant is nothing special there's just a bunch of tables with some nice details on there the kitchen's right here and some very simple toilet stalls so really um there's not much to it i also added a menu which partly i did steal from just an existing restaurant but it's fine <laughs> don't think about it i changed it up to make sure it's all star wars related so that's pretty good then if you turn around we have this little stage which honestly this is just my favorite thing ever it turned out super fun and really detailed especially the drum kit just looks great i think and for a nice easter egg there's a button right here which if you click it the lights go off and you have a little disco which is just that's just lovely especially at night it's nice but i'm gonna show you that later in this video now a quick word from the sponsor of today, Pocket Champs. In this mobile game, you can race against other players and train your own little champ. You can coach it and unlock its full potential by training it and finding the best gadgets for your races. Whether that be running, swimming, climbing, you name it. There's plenty of different maps that offer new challenges for you and your champ. And all you gotta do is just sit back and watch them race. What I personally love most about this game is just the characters. They're so cute. Just look at them. There's plenty of room for customization as well because there's a bunch of different characters. And as far as gadgets go, there's already already 40 in the game with a million more on the way. Okay, that's maybe a bit much, but you get the point. Monthly content also offers some nice variation in gameplay, like Spooky Season this October, to give an example. Honestly, the whole thing is just super wholesome. I like it. I've actually teamed up with them to give you guys a starter pack with 500 gems and the White Wolf skin, which I think looks incredibly cute. To get these, click the link down below or scan this QR code to download the game. And the rewards are going to be added to your account November 1st. And they are technically worth $15 and only available this October, so make sure to hurry up. Big thanks to Pocket Champs for sponsoring this video. Then now, let's continue. <laughs> So then, if we move on here, we've got a bunch of patrols, just kind of uh, making sure nobody does illegal stuff. <laughs> and then here, we have an AT-ST, which this, oh, it turned out so great. All the proportions, I feel like, are just spot on, and I am i couldn't be happier with it, really. It took forever, it was a huge gamble, but it did turn out fine, so I'm happy with it. And of course, this is also where we enter the whole speeder chase area. Um, this coaster, I must say, is definitely the best one I ever built. Um, in general, my previous coasters weren't all that great. But I put some serious time into this one, and actually, for once, it does feel pretty realistic as well. So honestly, before moving on, let's just kind of check all of this out. There's a speeder bike, which looks just the same as in the movies, I would say. Too bad you can't change the position of his arms, but um, it is what it is. Then right here, there's an intro sign, which of course tells you something about this coaster. And of course, a minimum height, which I thought would be a fun detail. Teachman actually pointed that out. I completely forgot, but it's it looks nice. And it just adds that tiny bit of realism as well. Then if we move inside of this uh, queue, it's it's kind of i mean it's not boring but it's a bit uh more of the same it's just a very long corridor that doesn't really change much then you go down 
on the stairs and this is where the station begins. There is a short kettle pen kind of queue right here with a bunch of speeders on the wall and then right about here you go inside the coaster through these little gates. This of course is the loading station exclusively. You put your bags in here which you can later pick up on the other side. Basically you depart and once you get back you stop right here and this is where you get out. So basically you get out here then you move all the way here and this is where your bags are which is just very convenient, I think. The rest of this isn't all that interesting. This is the way back up, of course. And then at the beginning right here, there's the operator stall, which honestly, it's simple, but it's functional, so I don't complain about that. But then honestly, right now, I would say let's ride and experience this coaster for real. I'm quite excited to show you, so um, let's freaking go. Then, like I mentioned before, you get out right about here and then you move up to the gift shop, which this turned out very nice as well, I think. Over here, you can check out the photos that were taken during the ride and there is actually a camera outside, so it is pretty accurate as well. You just have these seats, they're empty now because there's nobody in the coaster. Just a fun detail, I thought. Um, then here, some ATSDs that you can buy <laughs> along with a whole bunch of tiny speeder bikes. A giant speeder bike right here, which I think is gonna be like 5,000 euros, I don't even know. And here, if you can guess what this is, let me know down below in the comments, uh, I think. <laughs> They look pretty accurate, but um, yeah, very nice. In the center here, there's a bunch of books and some blasters, just basic stuff. And then once you've found your items, you can buy them here over at the counter. So that is uh, the Endor gift shop. If you move outside, it also says Endor gift shop. What a surprise. And you'll be greeted by a bunch of rebel troopers. So um, I like it. If we go back here, though, there is a little bridge, which we're going to go on later. But you just so you know, it's it's there. Moving on, um, we have some benches. These benches are basically spread out all over the area, which is something I initially forgot about. But um, later I did add them. So here you go. And here, this, I think, turned out very, very cool as well. Just a downed ATSD because the Ewoks were pretty aggressive towards them, I would say. So we definitely needed this for sure. Then now here we have the Ewok area. As I said in previous episodes, I wasn't unfortunately able to actually build Ewoks or find items that looks like Ewoks. So uh, they are missing. Kind of sad, but I mean, it is what it is once again. Um, however, first off, there's a little picnic area here where you can just kind of consume your food that you brought with you, either that or just the food that you bought. Useless information once again. Um, this is Chief Chirpa's treetop playground. Once again, if you want to read, pause the video. Um, I love the way this looks. Unfortunately, it is another spiral staircase. We have many of those. But to be fair, this was the perfect opportunity. A ladder could have worked as well, but nah, it's not that, it's not as cool, is it? Basically, this Ewok village is just kind of a, like a, a, a treetop playground. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Basically, this Ewok village is just for, for kids to play around. You have some very simple parkour elements like this. Just a ladder here and then you can either take the slide, which is not technically functional, but it looks like it is. Or you can continue here, go over this rope bridge type element. And once again, some stairs and another bridge right here, I think. Yep. And then you go back to the ground using the spiral staircase in this tree. 
So that is it, something different than just a regular ride, because um, I never really did this kind of stuff before. I always just did flat rides and roller coasters, and that is pretty much it. So I think it's a great addition, and I'm very happy with it, so let's move on. Of course, up there we have a giant dish, which is based on this dish from Return of the Jedi. I tried making it pretty accurate, and I do think it looks quite similar, so uh, no complaints there once again. Then, right here. We have another map and a fun detail actually about these is that you can see where you are there is a red triangle here which of course lets you know that this is where you are located at the moment then if we move on to this little spot you get some pretty cool views over the coaster going through the trench underneath the monorail and to this tiny little ice cream stall which i actually added completely off screen so this is new for everyone it's simple but you can see what it is and i do think it looks nice this whole section is kind of imperial it seems there's of course this dam element and all of these things at the sides. The benches are also steel this time around, so I thought this would fit quite nicely. Moving a bit further to the right here, we have Wicked's Watchtower. This name was requested by Kevin, the creator of the original idea for this park. Big thanks, because this is just perfect. Wicked's Watchtower, I love it. Once again, if you want to read, pause the video. To be fair, this ride is literally just an observation tower, it's nothing quite special, but it does give you a proper view of the Imperial Shuttle that I built on top of the landing platform. Now, the landing platform, of course, is seen in Return of the Jedi as well, and I tried making it as accurate as I could, but of course, all of these shafts are just a bit wider, a bit thicker, since the scale of this thing is not entirely the same as in real life. However, this, of course, houses the station for the intergalactic monorail. Once again, a spiral staircase, which brings you to the station, and this is where you wait for the monorail train to arrive. For the monorail in general, I made it brown, so it kind of matches with all the trees and everything. This is going to be the coolest right at the very end because you just see everything you can see the whole park in one right what else do you want anyway that is the landing platform along with everything that's inside um then really here we are back to the entrance of the area, meaning we've covered pretty much everything. However, I do want to add some more cinematic shots of the details you don't see in this little walkthrough that we've done. Of course, there's quite a lot more to it, so let me just show you in a nice cinematic montage coming right up. Guys, I must say, I did not think it was going to look this good. I am very happy. I'm very proud of what I did. Huge thanks once again to Kevin Lynch, the creator of the original Force World plans. Some of the concepts in there are just genius, for example. I mean, Wicked's Watchtower, come on. That's genius. Some of the things I did add later, of course, are the water. This wasn't here before. The reasoning for this is we all know I'm not going to be able to finish this park on this plot alone. So my idea is to add Tatooine right in this corner. And then maybe if we have space left at that point, we can add the Death Star right here. But then I think we've pretty much stretched it, meaning all of the back of this park is going to be empty. That's why I thought let's just put some water here instead, because it's just a lot more fun. It looks better. It's, it's more natural. It's of course not ideal. I would have liked to just finish the whole park, but it's never, it's not going to happen. We don't have enough space at all. I do think that once we do it this way, it can look like a finished park. It will look like a nicely concealed functional amusement area because that's the main thing. I just want to make sure I build stuff that looks finished. It doesn't have to be necessarily, but it just has to look like it. And this way, I think we can pretty easily do that. If you liked this video, uh, if you like this series, make sure to leave a like. Don't forget to check out Pocket Champs in the link down below. Hit the bell not to miss a single future video and then I hope I'll see you in the next episode of Building Force World.